So you just brewed a batch of kombucha. I hope you didn't think that was all. No, sir. Now it's time to do the best part. The most fun part. This is where you let your creativity show. Now it is time for what we like to call the second ferment. Now, the second ferment is the process where we add some sort of flavoring to the kombucha. Now, when I say flavoring, of course, I always recommend that you use natural juices, but feel free to use whatever you like. Now, the second ferment is also when we get those bubbles. If you take a look here at this glass jar, you can see the bubbles, which means you can see the carbon dioxide within the drink. But if you want that really fizzy kombucha, I'm talking soda-like fizz, then you're going to need to perfect your second ferment. So we're giving this kombucha some more sugar for it to feed on. The sugar, though, is in the form of natural sugars. It's sugar that we find within this fruit juice. Now, when we combine this fruit juice with this kombucha, what ends up happening is we're just feeding that yeast. And as that yeast eats the sugar, it makes more CO2, more gas. And the more CO2 we have, that means the more bubbles we have, the more fizz we have in our kombucha. And nobody really likes a flat kombucha, do they? Well, I do, but that's besides the point. All right, so let's talk about what you need to actually make your second ferment. You're going to need some sort of glass jar, a pitcher, and you're going to need something to store your kombucha in. I love these flip top bottles right here. This came from some old Trader Joe's ginger beer. And honestly, I found these on Facebook Marketplace for probably 50 cents a bottle. Like I said, these glass bottles here, these flip top glass bottles are my favorite. And if you made one gallon of kombucha, then you are probably going to need between four and five of these glass bottles. After you have your glass jars, you're going to need your fermented kombucha. And don't forget the fruit that you plan on juicing. I prefer using fresh fruit, but hey, if you have frozen fruit, you could easily throw that in a blender with a little bit of water and turn it into a, a puree of some sort and then use that instead of fresh juice. And don't think you can only use fruits for your kombucha. You can use all sorts of vegetables and herbs too. If you wondered why the gardener was talking about kombucha, this is the exact reason. Because I'm able to go outside into my garden, grab some fresh herbs and throw these herbs directly into my kombucha bottles. Or better yet, run these herbs through the juicer to extract that flavor into my fruit juice and then guess what? I get the health benefits from these herbs as well as the flavor. Best of both worlds. And if you're wondering what to flavor your kombucha with, don't worry, I have you covered. Check the description down below for a link to the ebook that I have. Click that link and it will take you straight to an ebook full of recipes for you to try. Now, after you have all of your ingredients together, it's time to get to work. The first thing you need to do, if you have this fruit like I do, chop it up make sure you wash it first okay now after we wash the fruit we are going to juice it look at this juicer right here man it's probably going 12 years strong that i've had this juicer and it still works almost as good as the first day that i bought it if you're interested there will be a link for this juicer down below now after we've chopped up all of our fruit and we've juiced it we need to separate our juice for this video right here, you're gonna see me make a few different types of juice. This one right here is red apple, lemon, and ginger. That's probably one of my favorite juices to drink in general. So you know what that means. It means the kombucha is amazing as well. The next one we have is good old green Granny Smith apples, some ginger, and of course, a little bit of lemon. And for our final second ferment that we're gonna be showing here, we're gonna do straight orange juice. Now, please don't come for me about this orange juicer that you see. I've been making juice with this juicer for probably 20 plus years. As a matter of fact, it was my dad's and he let me have it as soon as I was old enough to start making my own juice. So yeah, it's old, but guess what? It still works. I bet you one of those new orange juicers that you buy won't still work after 20 years. So once we have all of our juice, now it's time to go ahead and bring down our kombucha. If you brewed it properly, then you'll notice that you have another SCOBY formed on top of your booch. Don't throw it away. You can use it to start another batch of kombucha 
or you can add it to a SCOBY hotel. Now we're going to take the fruit juice and we're going to add some to the bottom of our bottles. How much you add is up to you, but I like to use between a quarter cup and a half cup of juice. Once I've poured the juice into the bottle, now it is time to backfill with our kombucha. I like to fill these bottles all the way to the top or as close to the top as I possibly can. You do not have to worry about leaving any space in the top of the bottle. Once the kombucha is filled, I simply wipe off the bottles and stick them in the corner and allow them to ferment for a day or two. And we can't forget about this funnel. It helps make sure that you don't spill any kombucha and it's easier to transfer it from your one gallon jug to your smaller bottles. The more fruit juice you add to your kombucha, the faster the second fermentation process will happen. If you leave the second ferment for too long, what ends up happening is you create too much CO2 in the bottle. So be careful whenever you're opening it. So you see, I have multiple bottles. One way that I can space this out to make sure that I have enough kombucha and it doesn't go bad is to open one bottle after a day and taste it. If I feel like the flavor is where I want it and it has the right amount of fizz, then I will just move the remaining bottles to the fridge because that cold temperature stops that second fermentation process. But if I crack open that first bottle and it doesn't have the right amount of fizz for me, then I'm going to move that bottle to the fridge. Hey, I already opened it, so it's stuck. But the remaining bottles, I will leave them on the counter and allow them to ferment for another day. Now, all we do is pop that top and enjoy. If you found this informative, which I know you did, but better yet, if you just enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share this video with as many people as possible. And that's it. Big City Gardener out.